Hello, welcome to Thorlamps. My name is Eric, and today I'll be demonstrating the alignment procedure I use when coupling linearly polarized light from a laser source into polarization maintaining fiber. For this demonstration, I'll be using 660 nanometer pigtailed laser source with a single transverse mode outputting less than two milliwatts of power, a fiber bench with two pre-aligned fiber ports, a linear polarizer and half wave plate for use in my fiber bench, polarization maintaining fiber patch cable with an attached fiber collimator, a temperature controlled breadboard, a polarimeter, a one inch diameter uncoated window, and an analyzer consisting of a linear polarizer and a power sensor. When using polarization maintaining fiber, it is important to keep in mind that it is not polarizing fiber. Polarizing fiber converts light with an arbitrary polarization state into light with a specific polarization state such as linear. This is not the case with polarization maintaining fiber. As the name suggests, polarization maintaining fiber preserves the polarization state of linearly polarized light traveling through it. This is only the case under specific conditions, so before beginning this demonstration, let's go over those. Single mode fiber is constructed with a core and a cladding. Ideally, the optical properties along the x and y axes would be identical. If this were true, light coupled into the fiber with any polarization state would be output with the same polarization state. Unfortunately, there are always small imperfections along the fiber that create differences between the axes. These imperfections can randomly change the light's polarization state and its orientation as it travels through the fiber, making the output polarization state unpredictable. A common approach to maintaining the polarization state in a fiber is to include two stress rods in the cladding. These stress rods are separated by 180 degrees, run along the length of the fiber, and exert stress on the fiber's core. This stress creates birefringence in the fiber core by increasing the refractive index along the axis that includes the stress rods, while having little effect on the refractive index along the orthogonal axis. Since light travels slower in a high index material, the axis aligned to the stress rods is called the slow axis, and the orthogonal axis is called the fast axis. To maintain the polarization state within the fiber, linearly polarized light must be coupled into just the slow axis, or just the fast axis, so the light only interacts with the refractive index along that one axis. If light is coupled into both axes, the component parallel to the slow axis will be delayed with respect to the component parallel to the fast axis. Any perturbation to the fiber caused by mechanical vibration or temperature fluctuations will cause the phase delay to change and create instability in the output polarization state. However, if perturbations are applied in a controlled way, the output polarization instability can be used to help align the input polarization state of a laser source. When the fiber is gradually heated or cooled, the amount of stress the rods exert on the fiber will gradually change. This will result in the output polarization cycling between linear and elliptical polarization states as the phase change cycles between 0 and 2 pi. As the alignment improves, the amount of ellipticity will be reduced. Optimal alignment occurs when the output polarization changes the least during the perturbation, which means the input polarization state is maintained the best. Now, let's take a closer look at my setup. I'll be linearly polarizing the light before aligning and coupling it into the polarization maintaining fiber. The polarization maintaining fiber is coiled up and taped down on top of the temperature controlled breadboard in order to maintain good thermal contact. This window picks off a portion of the beam and reflects it to the polarimeter while allowing the majority of the beam to be transmitted to the power sensor. I have located this window with an angle of incidence of less than 10 degrees in order to minimize the polarization dependence of this Fresnel reflection. The polarization state measured by the polarimeter can be visualized as a point on the Poincaré sphere. The equator represents all linear polarization states while the north 
and south poles represent right and left circular polarization states respectively. The other points in the northern and southern hemispheres correspond to elliptical states with right or left-handed rotation. Now I will begin heating my temperature controlled breadboard in order to perturb the polarization maintaining fiber on top of it. With the breadboard heating, I can see that the point on the Poincaré sphere is moving. This movement reflects the shifting output polarization state from the polarization maintaining fiber as a result of the changing stress inside the fiber. This stress changes the phase difference between the light aligned to the slow and fast axes of the fiber. Since the polarization state output from the single mode fiber is unpredictable, I'll introduce a linear polarizer into my fiber bench. Now, I will temporarily take my power sensor head off the rotation mount and place it in front of the fiber collimator's output so I can watch the power transmission and align the linear polarizer. I am doing this to maximize the amount of light I am coupling into the polarization maintaining fiber since the laser typically outputs an elliptical polarization state. Now that I have linearly polarized light being input into the polarization maintaining fiber, I'll put the power sensor head back and let's take a look at what happens on the Poincaré sphere when I perturb the fiber by cooling it. On the Poincaré sphere, I see that a relatively large circular pattern is being traced out so a significant amount of light is still being coupled into both fiber axes instead of just one. To improve the alignment, I need to rotate the linear polarization state so it is in line with either the slow or fast axis. To accomplish this, I'll place my half wave plate into the fiber bench. A circular pattern is drawn out on the Poincaré sphere each time the phase difference increases by another 2 pi. The radius of the circle indicates how well aligned the input polarization state is with either the slow or the fast axis of the fiber. Larger circles indicate there is a significant amount of light coupled into both axes, while smaller circles indicate that the input polarization state is well aligned with one axis. As I rotate the half wave plate, the amount of light coupled into each fiber axis changes, which consequently changes the output polarization state from the polarization maintaining fiber. Ideally, I would rotate the half wave plate until I see a single, stable point on the equator of the Poincaré sphere. This would mean I have input perfectly linearly polarized light, which was maintained along the entire length of the fiber as the temperature changes. Unfortunately, this is incredibly unlikely and imperfections within the fiber and fiber cabling will prevent the polarization state from being perfectly maintained. The goal is to tweak the alignment until I achieve the smallest diameter circle possible on the Poincaré sphere. With that done, this seems to be the smallest diameter circle I can achieve. If you do not have access to a polarimeter, it is also possible to perform this alignment using a linear polarizer and a power meter setup like I have here. This approach cannot measure the polarization state, but it can measure the amount of light polarized along the transmission axis of the analyzing polarizer. To show how this works, I will misalign my half wave plate so a good amount of light is being coupled into both fiber axes and begin heating my temperature controlled breadboard. Looking at the power meter software, I see an oscillatory pattern that follows the circular pattern plotted on the Poincaré sphere. That being said, let's concentrate on just the linear polarization states where the circle crosses the equator. When approaching a linear polarization state, the measured power approaches a maximum or minimum value for the oscillating signal. This is because more light will pass through the polarizer when the output polarization state is closely aligned with the transmission axis of the analyzing polarizer.
as the diameter of the circle on the Poincaré sphere increases, the linear polarization states are further apart and the amplitude of oscillation increases. As the diameter of the circle decreases, the linear polarization states are closer together and the amplitude of oscillation decreases. While unlikely, it is possible to accidentally align the analyzing polarizer such that there is no oscillation in the power measurement even when the diameter on the Poincaré sphere is large. This will happen if the polarizer is aligned with either the slow or the fast axis of the fiber. To avoid this, my first step is to rotate the analyzing polarizer until I see minimal power oscillation. Next, I rotate the polarizer another 45 degrees to maximize the amount of oscillation. With the analyzing polarizer properly aligned, I can begin aligning my half wave plate. While aligning the half wave plate, I am looking to minimize the amplitude of oscillation. It doesn't look like I'm making any further improvement, so I call this optimized. As I have shown, it is critical when working with polarization maintaining fiber to align the input linear polarization state with either the slow or the fast axis of the fiber. Doing so maximizes how well the linear polarization state is maintained as it travels through the fiber. A polarimeter is a very helpful tool for visualizing the alignment process and being able to perform it quickly but a linear polarizer and a power sensor can also be used. I hope this will help you in the lab someday. If you have any questions, please contact tech support.